The other day we got to see the brand new generations of Apple Watches. The Apple Watch 10 as well as the second generation Apple Watch Ultra in that new black color option. But the thing they didn't really talk about was the new changes that's found on WatchOS 11. So we have it installed right here because we do have access to the developer beta and this is the WatchOS 11 RC. In other words, these two Apple Watches are running the official watch was 11 for more updates so i'm going to go ahead and highlight all the new changes and cool things that they added that apple didn't cover starting off with the new watch faces so this is the new watch face that they added this one i believe is called the flex or flux it does do this cool rotation thing giving it that cool metallic effect which is available on all the apple watches that's on watch was 11 so this will come out on September 16th for everybody. And this is how it looks like on an Apple Watch Series 9 that we're using right here, the largest size. Oh, I'm sorry, this is the Reflections watch face. But if we go all the way to the right and add it, these are the three newly added ones. We got the Flex, which is the one I have mistaken for the other one. The new Photo watch face that we should already be somewhat familiar with. And Reflections. And the Reflection one does come available in both Dial with Circular with full screen or circular. Circular will give you access to four complications on each corner. And you have a variety of unique color choices to choose from. And they continue having that cool like 3D effect as you rotate your wrist. Or you go with solid color options or add your own, which is quite nice. And then if we go back and look at the flex. Flex, you do have the ability to change the numerals, which these different styles that you see here. And it's pretty interesting because you do have these two different styles to choose from. So you go with the always on display look or not. And these are all the color choices you got to choose from. And of course down here you have solid colors or you can add your own. And with always on enabled, it looks like that. Like I previously showed you. The unique thing about it, the second timer is this little full color thing that it has going on. Which is quite interesting. But in terms of complications, there is none. Even if you hit edit and we select different styles, we really don't have the ability to do complications on each corner, unfortunately. Now with these new watch faces, I have noticed that they've removed the Siri watch face. So if we go to S, there is no Siri. Another watch face that's now gone, unfortunately, is, is the Explorer watch face. If you have a LTE Apple watch, like our Ultra, because if I long hold and go ahead and look for the Explorer watch face, we have nothing in the E category anymore. Chronograph is also gone. And then the numeral watch face is also gone as well. But we still have the Nike one. But you still have the numeral duo as well as numeral mono. But if you go to watchOS 10, go back in time real quick, you see the numeral still exists. So they did took out a couple of watch faces, unfortunately. But this all could be due to the fact that smart stacks replaced the serial watch face. As you see, now you just rotate digital crown, it will give us access to the smart stack. And this will automatically adapt and suggest the widgets that Siri is best suggesting for you. So these widgets do adapt to which apps you use the most. Now, notice how the Shazam app is now here because once you update, it will have the ability to automatically recognize songs that's playing in the background automatically. See how we do have the Shazam app here now? As a smart stack, we'll be able to quickly identify songs without having a complication on your watch face nowadays. So there is some benefits to the smart stack. In terms of Apple Watch Ultra exclusives, now you have the freedom to long hold the action button and select what you like to replace the action button with right here on the go without having to go into the actual settings app on your iPhone. So you can actually swap it right here with accessibility, translation, voice memos, or flashlight. And if you're using one of the Apple Watch Ultra's watch faces, the default ones, like the modular Ultra, the bezel, you can swap it with the, tra the new training load information. So you can see your training load stats right here. I've been injured for the last week, so I haven't really been working out, unfortunately. And then for Apple Watches equipped with the double tap gesture, you can now use double tap to bring down your smart stack, and you can use that to scroll. And this works on all apps as well, if you want a hands-free scroll down. And you can always swap the settings in the settings if you want to do something else, like pause and play your media instead. Then the Apple Watch will support the Apple Cache, which you can use by using another iPhone. To send cash to, so I'm going to try it with a dollar right now. Go ahead and confirm that and have it ready. So now you can do this. I'm not sure if it's going to work with my own device, but we'll try. I guess it's not working, but app, tap to cash is compatible on the Apple Watch. So now we have that cool animation right there. 
but it's probably not going through because I'm sending it a dollar to myself. And then for notifications, as always, regardless on the app you're in, you're always able to hold down the top portion of the screen to bring down your notifications, or you can go to the homepage and utilize the digital crown. If you rotate digital crown from top to bottom, it will bring it down just like that. It even supports notification summaries as well, where if you have a stack of summaries of like notifications from the same app, it will automatically pile up into this summarize ability without Apple intelligence. So switching to the Series 9 once more, the smart stack in summary, you can long hold to edit your widgets with all these different choices to choose from. There's also support for third-party apps now as well. And think of these like widgets that you'll typically find on your smartphone. So you have the ability to pin them if you like as well to the very top if you want it to be default. But automatically, Siri will automatically categorize these throughout the day depending on your habits. And if we go back and edit, you may also integrate it so automatic check-in can also be on top here as you see right here. So now we have the check-in, a part of that. And this also supports live activities as well. If you have like an order going up on Starbucks as an example, you'll see the order stats right here. It's just like it would typically preview it on your iPhone, either the dynamic island or the bottom portion of the screen. Now in the settings, there are a couple of new things that Apple did added. And one of the biggest improvements can be located in sound. You see, the majority of everything else in the settings remain the same, except for ringtones, as now you have the ability to change the default ringtone with these other ones to choose from. You have about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Ooh, we have 9 choices. So you can select between, like, Nighthawk, hopefully the mic is able to pick that up, or Wonder. And you can change it for ringtone, text tone, new mail, calendar alerts, reminder alerts, default alerts, and they're kind of different than some of the other categories as well. Like we got Tinker. The other one didn't offer Tinker. So yes, you can finally change the sound, the ringtone of your alerts. Just no support for third parties. But one progress at a time. Maybe in the next update, we'll have the ability to finally customize it to your own. A unique ringtone that you downloaded. In terms of fitness tracking, whenever you start a workout and you start one, you have the freedom to go over here. And start a check-in now whenever you start a workout. And you can set that up by tapping here and tap the top portion. Over here, you can still select the contact you like to always check in with. And then tap send when you arrive at the gym or something like that as an example. And then out of there, another fitness app that got an update is the workout app or the activity, I'm sorry. If you get out of here, in your ring page, you know, if you scroll down, you can switch between the different categories, of course, as we already know. But if you like to always adjust your exercise or goals, you could just tap the plus and minus. You could change it for the day or change it entirely daily. Or you could also create a schedule as well. And then if we exit out of that, here you'll find your training loads. And this will automatically take you to the app. And every time when you end a workout, it ask you how difficult it was. And you can mark your rating right there. So I got injured, unfortunately, so I'm on a downhill at the moment. But it will typically monitor your 27 days or 28 days on average. And that is the white line right there. And then the dots is our seven day. And you can also tap here to go into your vitals, which I don't have vitals tracking right now because it requires you to sleep with your watch in order to track your data. But if we go back to like past days or something, some days I actually did slip with it, it'll look like this. But then a new thing that they added can be located also in the fitness app on your main device. Because the thing I should have done earlier is tap this, go all the way to the very bottom and pause my rings. Because I could literally pause it right here until Monday because I've been injured. So my sprees are not affected. So all my rings are grayed out. This way, you don't lose your sprees like I did. I totally forgot about that. Yeah, I ruined it because of that. I had a back injury, unfortunately. So now my rings are paused until the September 16th. I should be better by then. Yeah, if you look closely, you can edit the pause or resume if you get better sooner. Now, in terms of sleep tracking, sleep tracking also got some improvements as well because now the watch is smart enough to also detect whenever you're taking like a power nap throughout the day instead of you manually having it select nap or sleep tracking. It now does it all automatically, so you don't have to worry about that. And then a newly added app is the translation app, which always was available. You just had to download it separately, but now it's actually installed by default. And that is this app right here, translate, hit continue. I'm going to transition from English to Spanish. Como estas? How are you? 
So the translation app works really well. It uses select the language and you have all these different shoes from as well. So it's quite a few, but not a lot, but I'm sure Apple over time will add more and more. And it's pretty quick to the most part. And of course you have the play ability so you can speak out loud. How are you? Just like that. And then if you saw earlier, the smart stack does now feature Shazam because that is also now a new default app that's gonna be installed once soon as you update to WatchOS 11. And then the calendar app also now features reminders. So reminders are now mixed with your calendar app. And then if you haven't looked lately, if you're running timers in the stopwatch app, it's now black where previously it once was white. So I'm not sure exactly why Apple changed the color, but that app is now in dark mode. Aside from battery consumption, that's the only benefit I could see from that. Then in the timer app, also received a new fresh refresh update as well. This is how now it looks like, where it previously used to look like this. So that got a new refresh look as well. But if we set like multiple timers as an example, the view multiple timers at once, the screen is a lot bigger and easy to read than previously. Now, if we move on to Apple Maps on our iPhone, by tapping on your profile on the bottom right here, you'll find the offload map availability. By tapping here, you create offload maps from here, adjust the size, tap download, and on the very bottom, you can enable now to sync with your Apple Watch. So now you can have offload maps also saved on your paired Apple Watch. And will only synchronize via Wi-Fi as soon as you put your Apple Watch on the dock. That's why it says pending right here. So that's that. Now back onto this watch face. Another watch face I want to talk about is that photo watch face. So this one. I thing I notice is you are unable to create it right here as it does require you to actually go onto your iPhone itself. Or you could launch the photo app right here. Go in and like select a photo that you like to select to create into a watch face. Tap the up arrow and all the way to the very bottom you'll see create watch face. You can select the different styles you want and that's how it creates that new watch face. If you have an older watch face, I've noticed it's gonna pop up with a little message on the bottom to upgrade. When you click on here, it just instructs you how to create it. It doesn't upgrade your existing one. So some of your old watch faces that you created in the past will technically be grandfathered in. So if you have like some animated ones like this, I don't know why it's not loading, hold on. Eh, I guess watch faces with the animations are dead now. Oh, there we go. Now it's loading, it just took a while. So these will still be grandfathered in. So I recommend creating these first before you update to watchOS 11 or you're gonna lose this ability. I'll reference a video on the corner somewhere over here of how you could create these before it's too late. But from my experience, it's easier just going on the Apple Watch app and go into watch faces down here and select photos, choose a photo, tap add, let it process, and here it'll do the Apple intelligence to put the subject in front of the watch time and you can select the different styles right down here. But aside from that, there you guys have it. That is everything new on WatchOS 11. That's worth talking about. Let me know in the comment section which one of these features you are mostly looking forward to. And if you're concerned if your Apple Watch is compatible, if you have an Apple Watch Series 6 or newer, you're able to update to WatchOS 11 and have some of these amazing features. And then both the Ultra 1 and the second generation obviously will still be compatible and they will all receive this firmware update as well. My name was Eddie and thank you so much for watching. But real quick, if you'd like to know what's new on Apple CarPlay, I do go over everything new right over there. You can go ahead and watch. Thank you so much for watching.